All right. Good morning, folks. Thanks for joining uh, myself, Maria Colgan, and Andy Rivenis for this morning's Database in Memory office hours. All right. Thanks, Maria. Um, hello, everybody. Um, today, uh, my name is Andy Rivenis. I'm a product manager with Database in Memory, and we have the pleasure of having Maria Colgan with us as well. For Database in Memory, it's something we call the base level feature. This is new with, um, it's new and available in the 20.3 pre-release pre version and uh, we're going we're the plan and which I'll talk a little bit about is to uh, backport it to 19c but the, the exciting part is that we're going to allow you to use database and memory up to 16 gigabytes and not have to license the database and memory option but we're calling this the base level feature as part of database and memory and what this basically translates to or means for, for the use of database and memory is that you can now use up to 16 gigabytes. You can allocate the memory underscore size parameter up to 16 gigabytes um, and use the column store without having to license database and memory. Now to do this, you have to set a, a, another parameter as well. We'll go through the details, but um, basically all future versions and then our plan is to, like I said, backport this to a 19C in a, in a release update. So it won't go back to 12.102 uh, or 12.2, but uh, our plan is to also make this available in 19C since that is a long-term support release. The motivation for doing this is that customers uh, can see the value of database and memory. This isn't meant to um, make database and memory free per se, but it's really to kind of show, allow customers to see how fast database and memory really is. We've been talking about it for five years and talking about 10x performance improvements or, or better. And um, this is an opportunity for customers now to take a look at that without having to worry about licensing the option to do that. So I'm, I'm excited about it. So um, hopefully you guys will be as well. How this works. So I have my normal picture that I usually use uh, showing how we allocate uh, the column store within the SGA. And so my big, uh, usually I tell people that typically um, the allocation of the column store will be in, in usually gigabytes, people, or even terabytes. We have some customers with terabyte uh, column stores. So it formerly would have been a big picture here with uh, the uh, base level feature, you're limited to 16 gigabytes. And what happens is if you set uh, it, the parameter in memory underscore force to base level, then you're limited to 16 gigabytes or less of in memory size. And um, we all, you can allocate that here. And we'll, tr we'll track that as in memory base level. And so you don't have to worry about having um, not licensed database and memory as an option. Now it only works on enterprise edition, just as database and memory does. So you can't go to standard edition and use, use this. But, um, uh, but other than that, it's a, a database of memory. And so you can try it out. Um, so some of the details. So in memory underscore force has to be set to base level. And then that bypasses all of the other parts of database and memory and the option. It is at the CDB level. I actually did all this with uh, CDB multi-tenant because that's where we're at now with the new releases. There's no um, non-CDB support. Now there is a 19C, so that uh, becomes a, a different issue. But in moving forward with Oracle database, you only have CDB and PDBs. And so at the CDB level, you set in memory underscore force to base level. Um, by default, it's, I think, none. Um, and so that then triggers the ability to use the base level feature. Once you've done that, then you can allocate the in-memory underscore size parameter. Um, in the CDB environment, then each uh, PDB can only draw the total for the CDB of 16 gigabytes. However, on rack, each instance in a rack node, so each uh, instance of the CDB can have 16 gigabytes of column store enabled there as well. So technically you can have more than 16 gigabytes 
of column store available in a rack cluster. However, with the base level, really what we're just after is to allow people to, um, to experiment with database and memory. So we only support mem compressed for query low. So as objects are populated um, into the IMCUs, which we've talked about, we will do compression. So typically about a 2x, maybe a little more, depending on the data, how well it compresses. Compression like, is very um, uh, data dependent. And, um, but we support mem compressed for query low. And so that'll be the only compression. Um, if you add a, a different level of compression, it'll be ignored and it'll just, the objects will populate um, with just compressed for query low, mem compressed for query low. Uh, all of the alter table in memory, priority, all that stuff stays the same. So nothing changes there. Um, the other things that we're not, um, we haven't enabled with base level, which we do have in the full option, uh, automatic in memory, which we um, introduced in 18C, um, that's not available with uh, uh, the base level feature. Cell memory, so you can't use um, uh, the, the database of memory formatted data in Exadata flash cache. So that's also uh, disabled. It's only part of the database of memory, the full option. So really what we're targeting here is the DRAM, uh, allocating the column store with in memory underscore size in the SGA and making use of database and memory there. Um, the feature tracking for the licensing folks is disabled. We only, we just track at the base level feature so you won't get in trouble with LMS or any other um, folks. Uh, and it's not available, so it is available in the cloud. It's available anywhere Oracle database runs. However, not in authorized cloud environments. So, other folks' clouds, even though database and memory could be used, um, the base level feature is not available. So those are really the only caveats, and that's not, so all of the great features with uh, uh, query optimization, hash joins, vector group by, all the things we've talked about over the last couple of years, all of those features are available and can be used. And so I think it's a great way to see really how much uh, benefit you might see with database and memory um, uh, if you chose to say uh, buy the option and, and put in you know hundreds of gigabytes or even terabytes of data. 16 gigabytes is still not a bad uh, playground. No and especially as you said because the data is going to be compressed so you know it's it's quite a chunk of data to and if you were smart about what you populated perhaps only certain partitions from certain tables, you could really get your kind of working set into in memory with, without any. Right, and you know, the, the, the line order, the SSB star schema benchmark is actually fun to be able to do demos with, but I actually I would suggest that um, the real value here is trying it with some of your data and right. actually seeing, maybe even running some of your queries, if you can, um, subset your data down, whether it's a single partition or um, maybe uh, just doing a, a selecting the data, create table as select uh, from a subset of your data, and then experiment with your real queries and your real data um, and see for yourself as opposed to, you know, our, um, our, our hands-on lab type scripts, which are mm -hmm. stuff we just made up that aren't real world. Um, uh, that's kind of the point of the uh, 16 gigabytes is to be able to really try it on um, your data as well. So either way. Yeah. Uh, but Annie, can you let us know again uh, where we can get more information as well as on the blog? Yes, yeah, so we have the blog and then thank you. We have our additional resources, really the, um, the blog and then uh, oracle.com where we have uh, a bunch of white papers listed. They're on the resources page in the blog, but then a lot of customer stories. So if you want to see how other customers have used it, um, our YouTube channel where we have uh, what we're doing with Ask, well, I guess the Ask Tom sessions are separate, but they're YouTube kind of as well. But you can go to the our office hours sessions and then on our YouTube channel, we have a bunch of videos that we've done about how to use database and memory, um, as short demos. Um, which reminds me, I still need to do that series that I was talking about doing. Um, and then documentation. So the database and memory guide is part of the documentation starting in 12.2 and above. Um, and so certainly the 19C or the 
20.3 pre-release. If you want to look, learn more about um, the uh, parts of uh, the base level in, with this parameters, you can go to the current 20.3 pre-release documentation set. It's all documented there. So you can, it's all official. And so um, all of those uh, um, uh, resources are available. Plus you can follow me on Twitter, the In Memory Guy, um, SQL Maria, uh, Maria Colgan, and- Awesome, okay. So with that, let's wrap it up. Uh, and again, let me just thank one more time, Andy Rivenis for being our presenter today, uh, doing an awesome job of introducing the new database in memory base level which hopefully should get everybody now using database in memory and being able to see the advantage they can get with it. Yes, and, and thank you everybody for joining us today as well. So.